All right, so how are we all doing today? My name is Adam and welcome to a brand new YouTube video. Welcome to the lockdown hairiness. Uh, I've grown a beard and my hair has gone absolutely crazy. Um, but the barbers aren't open at the moment, so we're just going to have to deal with it. Today's video is basically going to be about my cardistry journey. How I started out when I was a kid and how I developed and how I learned all of the tricks and skills to then becoming at one point a professional. So yeah, we'll talk about the journey, how I learned everything. And yeah, it's gonna be hopefully entertaining and interesting for all of us. And also just to let you know, I've timestamped the sort of chapters of the video. So if you wanna go to a particular section, then you can. So without further ado, let's get started. I actually started off as a magician. Uh, I was about 13 years old when I started doing magic. My dad bought me this magic book when I was a kid and it was like a Christmas present and it was one of those presents where it was like, oh, that's really cool, thank you so much. And then you sort of put it away and you never look at it again. So one day I had a dream, but it prompted me to pick up this book out of the bookshelf and just read it cover to cover. So I took the book and I learned all of the tricks. It was card tricks for the first half of the book. So I studied that. And I literally learned every single trick. It took me a fair few months to learn it all, but I did, you know, I got the basics down. I kind of just found my pension for card tricks. I just really liked doing card tricks. Uh, I was on YouTube and, you know, looking through all of the videos on card tricks and just learned a bunch of them, you know, and I was just building up my knowledge. It got to a point where I just was comfortable being a card magician. And I was about sort of 14, 15 years old at this point. As I learned, I started to get introduced to cardistry. It was called card flourishing at that point. It was only basic stuff. It was like fanning and doing like a lapel spread and some card twirls and stuff like that. When I was about 17, 18 years old, I started to learn to do proper cardistry. The way that I learned cardistry was basically like anything else. You sort of start off with the absolute basics. So this gets into the next part of the video. Uh, how did I actually learn to do cardistry? So I actually started off um, by just watching a ton of videos. I always understood that you had to do the basic things well for you to then be able to progress. And it just got to a point where I only wanted to learn like a few tricks at first, but then it became addictive. Like I wanted to always level up and that's just my mindset. So I then just learned everything I could possibly find on the internet in books, like literally everywhere, every source imaginable. So we'll do like a quick overview of what I actually learned. To start things off one-handed cuts, like the Charlier cut, the Revolution cut, uh, the scissor cut. These are all moves that I was starting out on. And then I kind of moved on to two-handed cuts. So the civil cut was like the staple. I then moved on to the uh, pirouette, spinning card in your finger trick and uh, like card twirls and stuff like that. And then I kind of figured out that there was categories to cardistry. And this really helped me understand uh, cardistry at a more advanced level. So off the top of my head, these are the categories that I developed. It was one-handed cuts, it was two-handed cuts, it was card twirls and spins, it was fans and spreads and aerials. And there's probably more that I've forgotten about, but they were like the sort of basic ones uh, that I can put moves into. So with that knowledge, I then remember just like grafting over like one-handed cuts. I found that with the different sort of grips and ways that you can like maneuver the packets in one hand, it really helped me learn two-handed cuts. So it was a very natural progression from the two different categories. So then I got to a point where I basically had a very good understanding of lots of different things in cardistry. And then it was a question of learning the more advanced stuff. As you've probably seen with a lot of cardistry videos, there is some crazy things that people can do. And it was always a question for me of, can I actually attain that level? I then got to a point when I was about 17, 18 years old, I just actually got social media for the first time. I started posting videos on Instagram and it was cardistry video. I was just watching, you know, like the very best cardists at that time do their thing. And I was literally just watching their videos and trying to figure out how they were doing what they were doing. So again, I, I just kept on building my knowledge and it got to a point where I learned so much about cardistry that I then started to create and I then understood what style I liked and what related to me. That, that's a very like basic linear journey as to how I got from 
a noob who couldn't even shuffle a deck of cards properly to then being able to perform cardistry at a very high level. And now we're going to talk about uh, actually how long it took me to master these moves and how I learned to do what I could do. Obviously, it takes different people different amounts of time to master something. This is just my particular journey. I started off with the Shirley A cut and honest to God, it took me about three to four months to actually learn this move. It was infuriating. I couldn't seem to get past the stage where the cards did this. I couldn't get that part of the move. This bit here, I couldn't figure out. I should have given up really, but I didn't. You know, I kept on plugging away. And once I actually mastered the Shirley A cut, I then moved on to the other one-handed cuts, as I mentioned before. I mean, the Revolution cut was the next one for me. It took me probably like, again, two to three months to actually learn that move as well. Moves like the scissor cut, it was difficult. I mean, again, we're talking like at least a month to actually learn that move. But again, I could get it down and my fingers were starting to develop the strength and my mind was understanding how these moves were working. One thing I do remember when I was starting out is that I never just focused on one move. I had like three or four moves that I really wanted to do. And I was like trying to work on them as well to have like a break from the other one. I mean, this probably isn't the best thing to do, but for me, it just kind of helped the process. It definitely slowed it down for sure. I think if I focus on one move at once, yes, it would have been so boring. It would have been like mind numbingly boring, but I think I would have been able to learn cardistry a lot quicker than I actually did. It took me a long time to actually get the basics down. I didn't have the style down at this point. It was just a question of being able to do it mechanically. I didn't develop the smoothness and the sort of the style until I studied cardistry a little bit more specifically and practiced like every single day. And then my hand just kind of, you know, flowed with it. One thing I will definitely say, if you want to smooth your cardistry up and make it look stylish, 100% film yourself doing it. Get your phone on, film it and see how it looks. You can tell a lot by just watching your own performances and you can sort of see where you need to improve and what doesn't look good about the move. It's actually a really good way to expedite the process and uh, get your card tree looking super cool. But as I moved forward, as I got more experience, it took me less time to learn the moves because I understood how these moves were built. Once you have the basic knowledge down, things do start to sharpen up pretty quickly. One thing I also remember specifically was the deck flip. I remember with the deck flip, I was performing it clockwise as opposed to anti-clockwise. And we're talking for reference, I was doing it in the left hand and it just, it didn't work for me. I never quite understood why the cards were going the opposite way and why it wasn't looking good. And then it just sort of clicked to one day. I always find that with, with things in life, the penny does drop late sometimes and you often think, why am I so dumb? Why am I not getting this? Uh, but then you understand that actually it's just a simple little thing which you didn't do in the first place and that actually had a big effect. Another thing I would say is just like watch people who are good at doing cardistry do cardistry and then understand why they're so good at it. And often it's like little nuances and little things that you're not picking up which is making their cardistry look super cool. Actually thinking back, I was using really bad cards which probably didn't help with the learning process. If you're watching this now, uh, these are bicycle cards. These cards are like really good to use. I think I was learning on like super cheap paper cards and even plastic cards. There, there's a store in the UK called Powerland and they used to sell uh, these like really horrible navy blue plastic cards. And they used to sell like a double pack of these like really uh, weak paper cards as well. I didn't have for example, like bicycle cards, which is like a staple, it seems. I was literally learning on the worst cards you could possibly imagine, but I still could do it. If you want to actually learn cardistry with decent cards, let me recommend you some. Of course, bicycle cards are a great shout. Tally Ho Circle Back are also a fantastic deck of cards. You can get these cards super cheap on Amazon um, and you can get like a brick of them, which is like 12 decks of cards in one box. I bought that like years ago and I still have unopened decks of cards somewhere. So I would definitely recommend bicycles and tally hose to start out with. I'm pretty sure that is everything. Wow, that's that's the whole journey pretty much just laid upon you on a YouTube video. I hope this has been vaguely entertaining or at least interesting to know how I learn card history. Basically the moral of the story is just never give up. Just keep on learning and learning and learning. It's the best way to develop. Every single day just try and push yourself to the next level, try and 
learn something different or just practice what you're trying to learn and get it down. It's the best way to progress and then you'll find that your knowledge will just build and build and build and your learning time will decrease. You'll start to get things quicker and you'll start to smoothen your cardistry up as well. Thank you for watching that video. I really hope that's been decent. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've enjoyed it. That's really cool to say. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So thank you all so much for supporting the channel. And until next time, have a great day and all the very best.